And that is the next step, loading the sample into the high pressure port and continuing the analysis. It is important to complete this process correctly and completely to make certain that the initial high pressure analysis results match the final low pressure analysis results. The software will start the high pressure analysis at the same pressure as that last low pressure point, but we need to make sure that the pressure transducers match up near ambient pressure. The high pressure system may have just completed an analysis, possibly resulting in some pressure offset at the lower end of the operational range due to hysteresis in the transducer. We can make use of the reading of the low pressure system when idle to adjust any offset in the high pressure transducer. We will do this when we initiate the high pressure analysis. It is important as well that we do not cause any intrusion to take place while tightening the high pressure system. Any intrusion that occurs while tightening will not be recorded by the software. And if it does not fully extrude once tightening is complete, we'll leave a flat spot in the cumulative intrusion at the crossover point between the low and high pressure portions of the analysis. The instrument software will match the capacitance readings from which intrusion volume is calculated, but cannot account for any intrusion that occurs while data are not being collected. The high pressure port closures are lowered at this point, but not sealed. Chris will raise the closures until the latching gauges for each. He will insert the penetrometer into the high pressure port, loading it up into the closure first, releasing the latch to lower the closure slightly, and then seat the penetrometer onto the banana plug in the bottom of the chamber that connects to the high pressure capacitance. Once seated, he will slowly lower the closure until it contacts the top of the high pressure chamber. Since we're only analyzing one sample, he will lower the closure for the other high pressure chamber as well. As with the low pressure system, all high pressure ports must be sealed for the analysis to proceed. Chris slowly tightens the two closures, being careful not to generate pressure that could lead to unrecorded intrusion. Note that the vent valves at the top of the two closures are open while tightening the closures. As Chris closes the left port, some high pressure fluid can be seen entering the vent valve reservoir. We do not see any yet on the right side. That is because the penetrometer occupies some space in the left chamber, but the right one is empty. Chris will add some high pressure fluid to the right vent reservoir. To pull that fluid into the right chamber and to help expel air from both chambers, Chris loosens the chambers, then retightens them. Notice that quite a bit of air is coming up into the right vent valve reservoir. After another cycle of loosening and tightening, more high pressure fluid is needed to fill the right chamber. Chris will repeat loosening and tightening the chambers until very little additional air comes from those chambers. Now we move back to the computer. High pressure analysis is selected from the unit menu. We select the same sample information file and assign it to the high pressure port one. We update the assembly mass. As mentioned earlier, we will use the low pressure transducer reading to adjust any offset in the high pressure system. To ensure that the low pressure transducer is reading the ambient pressure, loosen one of the low pressure ports. Make sure that the Determine Transducer Offset box is checked and enter the stable value for atmospheric pressure. Now click on Start to resume the analysis of our Illumina Catalyst Support sample. At an appropriate time, the software will instruct you to close the vent valves. Do so and click on OK to continue.